Hello folks and welcome to this week's Hi-Fi Review and before we get stuck into the video itself, do you like the t-shirt? I was attracted to it. Let me put up a proper image just in case you can't see the whole ensemble. Now I was attracted to this t-shirt because, well, at least to me, the tape it celebrates is pretty obscure and I'd like a little bit of help from any tape heads out there and I know you're there. So can you help me out on this? I think the A60, which is what you can see, as I say, celebrated on this t-shirt, I think it was only issued around the South America region. I could be wrong, probably am. So can anyone out there confirm or otherwise? But back to this week's review, and I'm gonna do a bit of background on this one. So if you don't want to hear, any such thing and you want to skip through straight to the closer look section or even the sound quality section, well, click down below in the description and there are hot links, as it were, and you can go straight there. So if you're off and running, then I'll see you later in the video. For everyone else, well, I want to talk briefly about the A1 from Project or, or officially the Automat A1 from Project because this is unusual. Why? Well, this is a fully automatic turntable with some audiophile pretensions, and it's priced at £369. Now, there's something oddly apt about the name of this new turntable from Project because, well, it'll take many of us back to the beginning. Automat A1 turntable from Project will take many of us back to the roots of our hobby. For many of us currently into hi-fi and music in general, we began our road to Sonic Nirvana via a solid and no doubt decidedly stout record player. In my case, that was a dance set alike fully automatic record player presented in a big box with a built-in amplifier and a single speaker. Now these designs were famously automatic, that is, at the flick of a single switch, the tone arm of the said record player would lift itself up in the air, as if by magic, and it would swing over to the beginning of the record, whether that record be a 12-inch album or a 7-inch single. It would then lower itself to the record surface and on would play the record, until it was completed, and then, again, as if by magic, it would lift itself up from the surface of the record, it would return the tone arm back to its cradle, and then it would switch off, which was all well and good and rather wonderful. But by the late 70s and certainly early 80s, the fully automatic turntable became deeply unfashionable and faded from view, while the manual turntable began to dominate the market. Why was this? Well, Partly because with the increasing competition from other entertainments, hi-fi in general lost ground. It began to move away from the mass market. Hi-fi became a niche, relatively high-priced, specialist and rather geeky hobby in which lifestyle features like automatic operation became less important and sound quality, well, it moved to the top of the priority list. From then on, and for many, many years, the new audiophile turntable designs veered away from features and lights and lots of knobs and the like to a more minimalist ethic. And there were sound techie reasons for this. The mechanical gubbins inside an automatic turntable, well, it's full of vibration-creating components, which doesn't really help the sound. Getting rid of the same well, it did help the sonic performance. Fast forward today and we have a vinyl renaissance, which means that the, the hi-fi geeks are no longer alone. They are now joined by general music fans. You know the sort of people I'm talking about here, the sort who are not interested in minimalism or 
the chemical composition of your plasma mass or the shape of your stylus tip. They just want to listen to music and quick. So, ease of use, well, that's suddenly a thing all over again. The rising popularity of vinyl has created a new demand for more lifestyle features in low cost turntable designs. And automatic operation, well, that's back on the table. Well, it's back in the turntable. But look, there's automatic designs and there's automatic designs. So, yes, you can buy a cheapo, fully automatic turntable for just over hundred pounds, although, well, I do wonder about the parts quality on these things. And on the other end of the scale, you can buy some very expensive automatics from the likes of Thorns, and I've reviewed a couple of those. I'll put links down below. They're on my website. Now, sitting somewhere in the middle of those, there are automatic turntables out there which have audiophile pretensions. These are these sorts of designs which want to have their cake and eat it. So they give you automatic features, but they also try and push the sound quality aspect as well. So let's give you one example. Well, Fluence is a good example. Their turntables are automatic, and yet, well, they're not. Let's take one example which I've reviewed on this channel, and I'll put a link up yonder if you want to check it out. The Fluence RT81, for example, doesn't automatically place the stylus on the record, nor, when it's finished, does it remove it at the end of play. It doesn't do any of those. So how can I describe the RT81 as being automatic? Well, the RT81 automatically starts the motor when you swing the tone arm towards the record. So pick up the tone arm, swing it to the very edge of your LP, and the motor magically starts. Then, at the end of play, the RT81 doesn't lift the tone arm from the groove. In fact, it leaves it there and switches off the turntable, leaving the stylus sitting in the groove, rather precariously, I have to say, until you decide to lift the tone arm and put it back on its cradle manually. Now, that's all well and good, but for many vinyl fans out there, it ain't enough. What many music fans have been crying out for, and for some time, is a fully automatic turntable priced around the £300 mark or so that goes big on features but also gives a nod to audiophile level sound quality. For many years such a goal seemed impossible. Project, it appears, doesn't know the meaning of the word. So let's look in more detail at the Project Automass A1, although I think I'll call it the A1 just for brevity's sake, shall I? And in the spirit of brevity, let's take a closer look. Welcome to the Closer Look section for the Project A1 turntable. This is a twin speed belt driven design, and it's the first in a new line of products from Project under the Automass banner. The key point in the A1's design is Project's assertion that the automatic operation only engages before and after the record is being played. It's apparently nowhere to be seen during play. Now this should help to reduce vibration and ultimately high frequency noise, but we'll get to that a bit later on. The A1 is a fairly basic looking device. Actually, this may be a good thing. It may be a boon for any nervous beginners out there who may be wary of lots of buttons, knobs and other controls. The A1 tries its best to stick what's necessary to operate the turntable and no more. For what it is, the plinth is surprisingly solid and heavy. I was expecting a light and fluffy basic plinth design here, but the company insists that most of the plinth is solid, with only enough space within to hold the actual mechanism. To the right is the ULM, 
This is a very basic looking 8.3 inch aluminium tow knob, which Project describes as, and I quote, ultra light mass. Well, that's industry speak for a tow knob that's as spindly as Tinkerbell's magic wand. Tracking force and anti skate are non adjustable and are fixed, which, considering the target audience for this design, is not only understandable, but I would venture to say, an essential requirement. One thing though, there's no latch to secure the tone on to the turntable. Now this is a design, as I say, aimed at the general audience, possibly one lacking maybe in a bit of confidence in hi-fi terms, a securing latch is needed here to prevent accidents. Hanging off the end of the tone arm is an Autofon OM10, and boy was I surprised by this one. The OM10 cartridge is valued at around £60, and that includes an elliptical stylus. I was really expecting something like an OM5S with a spherical tip, priced at around half the price. So, the OM10 is a real bonus here. Now, as you know, this is a fully automatic turntable, so no surprise that adjacent to the tone arm is a suite of controls. There's an arm lift which to my mind, operates backwards. That is, you push this arm lift upwards to lower the tone arm, and you push it downwards to raise the tone arm, which I find a little odd. The speed select switch, well, that moves up to choose 45 RPM, and down to select 33 and a third. Again, I would have thought that 33 and a third would have been positioned at the top and 45 RPM down below. Again, odd. Finally, there is a start stop switch, which sets the turntable in motion. Again, in contradiction to my own personal expectations, yours might be different, of course, starting the turntable is initiated by flicking that start switch upwards. I was expecting it to come down. Again, Odd. Rotating the plinth and looking at the rear of the A1, well, it's strangely barren back there. Yes, you will find a socket for a barrel plug that hangs off the supplied switch mode power supply. Next door to that, you'll find a pair of phono cables. These are tethered to the plinth and they can't be removed. Let's look at the platter now, and under the felt mat, is a non-removable platter. In fact, there is a securing clip around the spindle in case you get any funny ideas. The platter itself features cut-out windows. You can move one of these windows to locate a small switch, which turns a built-in phono amplifier on or off. I have to say I found this switch counterintuitive. If you're aiming the A1 at the beginner, the non-audio file, the guy who doesn't want to faff around with hi-fi, the chap who might very well be technophobic, the guy who just wants to listen to music, then why are you asking him to fiddle with a switch mounted directly to a scary circuit board accessed through a platter window under the platter mat? The whole thing seems a little bizarre. The switch is fine in and of itself, but it should have been easily visible and even easier to use, and it should have been obviously positioned somewhere on the plinth, of course. And attached to the rear of that plinth is a hinged lid. In operation, once you flick the plinth mounted start switch in classic fully automatic style, the tone arm lifts off its cradle, then lands on the start of the record, plays to the very end automatically lifts off the record when that occurs, and swivels all the way back to the tone arm cradle, whereupon the entire turntable switches itself off. Just watching the A1 in action triggers a bucket full of nostalgia for me. Speaking as someone who regularly runs a complex and delicately engineered turntable costing around what, £15,000? This little automatic at 369 was a joy to use. It was such a, well, it was such a nice change just to 
plonk a vinyl disc on a platter, then do nothing more than flick a single switch. And when that switch was flicked, I could literally turn my back on the A1 and sit down, knowing that the A1 would do the rest. It was oddly liberating. It was also lots of fun. I also felt that my vinyl was being taken care of. I've always been a little wary of those partially automatic turntables that stop at the end of the record's play, like the fluence I mentioned earlier, leaving the stylus in the groove. Now, as we all know, life happens, and it's all too easy to forget that the record is finished and that the stylus is, well, sitting at the end of the record. All it takes is one accident and you risk a vinyl scratch, or worse, damage to the cartridge's cantilever. With its fully automatic action, well, that's not going to happen to the A1. So, how does this thing actually sound? Well, let's nip over to the sound quality tests and we'll find out. to the sound quality tests for the Project A1 fully automatic turntable. Now, I don't have a comparably priced fully automatic turntable to use here as a reference, but look, I've been rambling on about the Fluence RT81 or review, so why not use that as my reference? It's at least partially automatic. It's well regarded, has a cartridge with an elliptical tip like the A1, and there's a review on this channel, so click above if you want to see that. Now, as for the A1, well, let's get the basics out of the way first, shall we? And I listened to Elton John's oldie book goody, The Single Tiny Dancer, and I was very happy with the foundation of the sound here. There was nothing untoward in sonic terms. No fizzy treble, no pinched mid-range and no booming bass. This is an important first test because, well, if a turntable fails this bit in the review, then it's basically dead in the water. There's no real recovery from that position. The A1, well, the A1 was A1 in terms of basic frequency discipline. Going into more detail, well, bass was good, although it didn't really have the same mass or confidence as heard from the RT81. Now, this is not necessarily surprising because the RT81 has a very heavy plinth, which aids its bass performance. Even so, the bass from the A1 remained decent for the price and the design. Not amazing, but certainly not bad. There was still impact from the drum strikes, which were arguably slightly more focused than the RT81. The 81 can sound a little bit warm and rather broad in bass terms. The A1 was just a tad more precise, I would say, even though the weight wasn't quite as impressive. In mid-range terms, if I was being super critical with my audiophile hat on, I'd point a finger at the slightly wobbly presentation, a slight lack of control around the upper mid area. I would actually say there's evidence of high frequency noise here. Despite Project's efforts in design terms to reduce this area, I can still hear something there. It's not bad, I have to say. The effect is certainly not damaging to the turntable overall, especially as we're talking about a full automatic here. But even so, I can still hear some high frequency noise up there. Playing Rock Now and Thin Lizzy's Chinatown, the mid-range does its best to remain open and airy. This does allow detail to reach out to the ear. There's plenty of emotion around the vocals, guitar strums are full of resonance, and the treble response is good. In short, well, there are better performing turntables out there for the price. But they all tend to be manual designs without the gearing and the extra vibration-inducing controls, and there's more budget spent on other essentials like the tone arm. Now, the Fluence RT81 is not fully automatic, so they can afford a better tone arm, and that tone arm is superior to the A1. But then again, 
As I say, the A1 has spent a wodge of its build budget on those fully automatic mechanics. And so I have to say, for a fully automatic turntable like the A1, the sonic performance is remarkably good. I have heard fully automatic designs in the past that whoa, can sound rather wayward. They can sound bright and thoroughly nasty. So, for a fully automatic design, the A1 not only sounds good, but it does actually challenge the RT81. Now, I would say that the RT81 wins on a head-to-head, -head, but the 81 is much more of an audiophile design. The A1 is a lifestyle design. Yet, well, it has a go, and it doesn't put itself to shame. It puts up a good fight. So, how do I conclude the review of the Project A1 fully automatic turntable? Well, let's have a few final thoughts, shall we? And then we'll do some pros and cons, and then I'll give you a rating. On my website, I have over 60 turntable reviews. On this channel, I have almost 30 turntable reviews. Now, within those lists are designs for turntables covering a host of different technologies and price points. And a whole heap of readers and viewers have commented and left their opinions on those turntables. Nevertheless, I have to say a fully automatic turntable of this configuration, sound potential, and price point has been the one design that's been talked about and in most demand during those comments. Thing is, you see, many general music fans just can't be bothered with the pernickety audiophile turntable configurations out there. And well, I can understand that. They don't care about hi-fi in and of itself. Yes, they want decent build quality. Yes, they want nice sound, but more than anything, they just want to play their records and they want to hear that music in the quickest possible time, preferably at the push of a single button. Well, Project has given those people what they've asked for. The A1 is it. For the price and for a fully automatic operation, the Project Automat A1 is a great little design. It blends price with ease of use and sound quality to offer a perfectly blended package. So let's take a look at those pros and cons. And in the good column, well, there's that minimalist design. This is not a turntable which is going to scare away those nervous technophobe hi-fi users. It's also easy to use. Everything on this turntable is pretty well signposted. In terms of sound, yes, I've been a bit picky, but for an automatic turntable like this, the sound overall is pretty good, as is the price for what you get for what this turntable actually does. In the bad column, and if I was being picky, well, I would say base confidence maybe could have been a little bit better, a bit fuller, while I could hear a little bit of mid-range noise, especially in the upper mid-section. If you grab an A1, just be cautious about the lack of a tone arm latch. And also, I'm still rather confused about the location of that phono amp switch. But I'm not really going to mark the turntable down, because for most people, when this switch is applied, well, most people will just forget about it and leave the switch in position for the rest of the turntable's natural life. All of that means that I'm very happy with the A1 indeed. So happy, in fact, that I'd like to give the A1 an award-winning rating. It gets 8 out of 10 and a groovy award. If you want one-button access to the grooves of your vinyl, then take a very close look at the A1. Congratulations to Project. And that's me done, folks. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. And I can't come back, come back just before you go and put the kettle on for your cup of tea. 
do me a favor, would you, and just click on the subscribe and the like buttons below if you haven't already done so. And just take a quick gander at the description downstairs there. There are hot links to navigate around this video. There are other links to my Facebook group, which you're welcome to join, and my website. And as I say, there's all kinds of extra ten table reviews over there. Please consider supporting me on Patreon because Patreon supports and funds this channel. It keeps it going. There may already be, there isn't as I'm speaking, but there may by now, as you're seeing this, there may be a new Patreon preview. I have I have some speakers here from Q Acoustic, some floor standers, which I may be reviewing in the future. So I've done a little exclusive preview over on Patreon, so check that out. Now, I will be back with another video on Friday, and I hope to have your company then. Until that time, folks, bye-bye for now.